By the early 2000s, Boeing was the undisputed king of the skies. From a number of points, it is merely an overnight trip, since a journey 3,000 miles or more is only a matter of hours. But behind closed doors, a quiet cultural shift was turning the world's boldest jet maker into a cautious, cost-cutting giant. In the last 20 days, Boeing 737 has a panel ripoff in midair, cockpit windows cracked on January 13th, Boeing 747 cargo plane burned up in the sky, January 20th, Boeing plane in Atlanta loses a wheel. Across the Atlantic, Airbus saw the opening and moved in. What followed wasn't just a battle over airplanes, it was a $50 billion chess match fought in design rooms, boardrooms and runways across the globe. And in a war everyone assumed Boeing would win, Airbus played a different game entirely. The giant who got comfortable. Boeing's empire looked untouchable. The 747 ruled the skies, airlines lined up with orders, and the 1997 merger with McDonnell Douglas seemed to lock in decades of dominance. But that merger came with a hidden cost. A shift from bold engineering gambles to corporate caution. The culture that once bet the company on the 747 now obsessed over cutting costs and avoiding risk. Across the Atlantic, Airbus watched closely. For a challenger with nothing to lose, this wasn't just a crack in the armor, it was an open door. The only question was where to strike first. Building the European Challenger. Across the Atlantic, Airbus was quietly building something Boeing couldn't match. A jet-making machine backed by entire nations. France built the cockpits, Germany the fuselage, the UK the wings, and Spain the tail units, all converging in Toulouse for final assembly. It wasn't always efficient, but it came with a weapon Boeing couldn't buy, political will and national pride. Decision-making could be slow, but it gave Airbus something Boeing could never replicate – deep, multi-government support. Big orders from European flag carriers weren't just commercial wins, they were acts of national pride. Throughout the 1990s, Airbus played a steady game of catch-up. The A320 chipped away at the 737. The A330 matched the 767. The A340, though not a bestseller, proved Airbus could compete in long haul, but the Boeing 747 remained untouchable, both as a sales juggernaut and as an icon. If Airbus could dethrone the Queen of the Skies, it wouldn't just be a commercial victory, it would be the aviation equivalent of storming the enemy's capital. The head seat at the table would be theirs, and Boeing's crown would hang in the balance. In the early 2000s, Airbus began work on the jet they believed could do it. But winning that crown meant taking an enormous gamble on a plane so massive, so expensive, that failure could sink the company entirely. Thousands of jobs, national prestige and Europe standing in aerospace all rested on a single design. If the A380 stumbled, there might be no second chance. The A380 Gamble the Airbus A380 was conceived as a flying declaration. Two full decks running the length of the fuselage. Four massive engines. Room for over 500 passengers in a standard layout. And more than 800 if configured for all economy. It would be the largest passenger jet ever built. The logic was bold but clear. Major airports were running out of takeoff and landing slots. If airlines couldn't increase frequency, they could move more passengers per flight. The A380 would make congested routes more profitable and keep high-demand hubs flowing. But building the A380 was a monumental challenge. Its components were too big for standard transport. Airbus widened roads, reinforced bridges and created custom barges to move wings, fuselage sections and tail assemblies across Europe. The program cost more than $15 billion and required one of the most complex supply chains in aviation history. When Singapore Airlines launched the A380 in 2007, it drew crowds. Quiet cabins, spacious layouts, onboard bars. It felt like the future. Did you know? The A380's wing was designed to handle an even larger, heavier version that Airbus never built. Across the Atlantic, Boeing saw the giant double-decker as a slow, expensive gamble. The kind of piece you push forward in chess only to watch it get trapped. 
And while Airbus was betting everything on bigger, Boeing was preparing a quieter counterattack, one that would make size itself a weakness. Boeing's Dreamliner Vision Boeing's red on the market was almost the opposite of Airbus's. They saw hub-to-hub -hub travel as yesterday's model. Tomorrow, passengers would want to fly directly between smaller city pairs without connecting through mega hubs. Their answer was the 787 Dreamliner, a mid-sized, ultra-long-range twinjet built largely from carbon fiber composites. Lighter than traditional aluminum designs, it promised fuel savings and the ability to serve thinner, long-haul routes like Boston to Tokyo or Perth to London non-stop. Passengers would notice the difference too. Bigger windows, higher humidity and lower cabin altitude meant fewer headaches and less jet lag. Airlines liked the flexibility. They could open new point-to-point -point routes without filling a 747 or A380. But Boeing's decision to outsource unprecedented amounts of manufacturing backfired. Delays piled up. Some suppliers struggled to meet quality standards. And early aircraft faced grounding over battery fires. Even with the rocky rollout by 2011, the Dreamliner was proving its worth. It was a direct challenge to Airbus's long-haul strategy and left the Europeans with a gap in their lineup. Airbus's response wouldn't be in the wide-body fight just yet. They were about to make a quieter move that would shake Boeing where it least expected. And that move wouldn't come with fanfare or massive engines, but it would quietly steal Boeing's biggest moneymaker right out from under them. The Quiet Revolution of the A320neo in 2010, Airbus unveiled what looked like a simple upgrade, the A320neo, short for new engine option. It was the same A320 that airlines already flew, but fitted with new generation engines and aerodynamic refinements that cut fuel burn by up to 20%. Crucially, airlines could operate it without retraining crews or overhauling maintenance systems. The cost savings were immediate, the transition painless. The market reacted instantly. Orders flooded in, and within months, Airbus had booked thousands of commitments. Boeing was blindsided. Their 737, first introduced in the 1960s, suddenly looked dated. The rush to respond produced the 737 MAX. Rather than design a clean-sheet aircraft, Boeing opted for a re-engined upgrade like Airbus, but with structural compromises. Those changes would eventually lead to the MCAS system, a software fix for handling characteristics, and the root of a coming crisis. Did you know? The A320neo family reached 8,000 orders in just over a decade, more than any other single aircraft line in history. While Boeing chased prestige projects, Airbus had secured the narrow-body market, the bread and butter of global aviation. The A350 enters the ring. The A380 wasn't delivering the dominance Airbus hoped for, and Boeing's 787 was carving out a new long-haul niche. Airbus needed something to hit back hard. In 2015, they launched the A350XWB, the extra-wide body. It was built to go after both the 787 and Boeing's longtime bestseller, the 777. With over 50% composite materials, new Rolls-Royce engines, and a wider cabin than the Dreamliner, it gave airlines more seating options without sacrificing range or efficiency. The A350 quickly won favor with high-profile carriers like Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, and Cathay Pacific. Pilots praised its handling and endurance. Passengers liked the quiet, roomy interiors. Most importantly, the A350 started eating into Boeing's 777 order book, a serious blow to one of their most profitable programs. The long-haul fight was close, but in the planes most airlines relied on, Boeing was about to face disaster. The MAX Crisis In 2019, Boeing's century-long image of invincibility shattered in less than five months. Two brand-new 737 MAX jets fell from the sky, killing 346 people and grounding the entire global fleet overnight. For decades, Boeing had been the gold standard for safety and engineering. Now it was the symbol of cost-cutting, secrecy and fatal design shortcuts. The shock was instant, but the damage kept spreading. 
regulators launched investigations, airlines tore up contracts, the world's news outlets ran crash footage on an endless loop. And while Boeing fought to contain the disaster, Airbus struck. They ramped up A320neo production, handed out early delivery slots and pushed the A321XLR, a transatlantic-capable jet, Boeing couldn't answer. By the time the MAX returned in late 2020, the balance of power had shifted for good. Airbus wasn't the underdog anymore, they were the benchmark. The age of Boeing's easy dominance was over, and Airbus had no intention of giving it back. Checkmate in the skies By the early 2020s, Airbus was leading Boeing in annual deliveries, narrow-body market share and, crucially, perception. They weren't the challenger anymore. They were the standard. The A380 may have been a commercial misfire, but it proved Airbus could build the most complex passenger aircraft in the world. The A320neo had crushed Boeing in the largest market segment. The A350 was steadily stealing long-haul contracts. Boeing still had strong products in the 787 and upcoming 777X, but the momentum was gone. Airbus's steady strategy, combined with opportunism during Boeing's crisis, had given them the advantage. In 2019, Airbus outdelivered Boeing for the first time in eight years and has kept the lead since. The billion-dollar war for the skies wasn't won with a single knockout blow. It was won with a series of well-timed strikes and an opponent too distracted to block them. The next battle. The fight isn't finished. Boeing is betting heavily on the 777X to reclaim long-haul supremacy. Airbus is developing hydrogen-powered concepts and exploring the next generation of narrow bodies. Both know the next big breakthrough won't just be about fuel burn. It will be about sustainability, regulation and who can meet stricter emissions targets first. The stakes are enormous. A successful zero-emission airliner could dominate the skies for decades. A failed program could sink billions and set a manufacturer back a generation. History offers one lesson. The winner is rarely the company with the biggest plane or the deepest pockets. It's the one that reads the market right and moves before anyone else. The $50 billion war for the skies is over. For now. But the next battle? It could be worth hundreds of billions and fought on entirely new terrain. Hydrogen-powered fleets, zero-emission long haulers, AI-assisted air traffic networks, the first to master them could dominate the next century of flight. So will Boeing reclaim the crown or will Airbus tighten its grip on the skies? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation's greatest rivalry, don't forget to subscribe for more stories from the skies.